Okay. Um, well, I, I thank uh, Toti Daskalopoulos for agreeing to change uh, time. Um, so I will do the last lecture of my course, um, then uh, uh, Toti will uh, give the last lecture for this uh, first week. I hope that uh, you have uh, enjoyed uh, our lectures and um, that the second week will be also interesting for you. And um, so to, to begin with, I would like to say a couple of words uh, on, the, um, on this Hamilton's Harnack estimate. Um, we are not going to use it for the, the rest of the lesson, but I think it's a um, very interesting uh, topic in itself. And also I, I guess that uh, maybe someone next week will uh, quote it and uh, will uh, we'll be surprised if you don't know <laughs> Hamilton's Arnick inequality. We'll say, but what have uh, people said to you in, uh, in a whole week <laughs> if you don't know Harnack's inequality for um, mean curvature flow? Uh, then um, let me give the statement, which is, uh, OK, um, theorem. Uh, by Hamilton, uh, let um, M in Rn plus one a solution of uh, mean curvature flow with uh, uh, strictly convex with uh, Hij. Uh, then, uh, for every vector uh, field um, VI, uh, there is the following inequality um, involving the derivatives of H. Equality case, uh, uh, sorry? BJ, you're right. Um, and um, in particular, uh, which implies um, uh, taking uh, VI equal to minus. Uh, dih over h uh, and uh, um, so we can um, uh, okay uh, we can uh, make a certain choice of vi if we want a more self-contained inequality so to say um, if we plug this here here we have um, gradient h square over h. Here we have the second fundamental form. Um, no, sorry. We can. Um, and if we know that the, the second fundamental form is um, uh, on a convex, uh, h over n is, um, oh, sorry, I don't need this, sorry, I was getting confused. So h is greater than any eigenvalue of the, of the second fundamental form because all eigenvalues are positive. Uh, we did use uh, that, uh, so we get a minus 2 gradient h uh, 
uh, square over h here, so we deduce um, this inequality. So it is an inequality involving uh, derivatives of, uh, of H. H, we already know that it satisfies uh, an equation. Uh, so dt minus Laplace uh, equal uh, A squared times H. Uh, this, uh, but it also satisfies this inequality. And as I told you, this inequality implies um, a control on how much H changes from one to to, to two positions in uh, space and time. And um, um, let me also show a corollary. Um, on uh, an ancient solution, so you should regard um, this T as um, T minus zero, so the the time elapsed from the initial value. You have an ancient solution. You can write instead of t, you can write t minus t0 with t0 uh, that can be as negative as you wish. That is, uh, on an ancient solution, this term can disappear. An ancient convex solution, you have uh, dh over dt, um, greater than uh, gradient h square over 2. In particular, uh, on an ancient solution, uh, h is pointwise monotone, monotone increasing. Over, yeah, thank you. Of h, uh, is increasing. Um, so um, instead of uh, giving more details on this, uh, so um, somehow this is um, um, it's proved by a maximum principle. And you, if you have an eternal solution, uh, you don't have this term. Uh, and you find some vector field where this becomes equal to zero, so by strong maximum principle, this propagates uh, uh, for all times and spaces. And uh, the, this gives a rigidity which implies that the solution, the eternal solution is translating. And um, this is uh, the idea of Hamilton's proof of the result I gave you this morning. Um, I wanted to... Uh, go back uh, to, to, to give you more, um, more concrete example of the analog estimate for the classical heat equation in, uh, in Rn. Yeah, thank you. heat equation in uh, Rn. So there is this uh, easy theorem. I think in this form it was also observed by Hamilton for the first time. Uh, let u, uh, let's say, Rn to R solution of uh, uh, the heat equation. Um, U positive. So Harnack inequalities have this feature. The solution is positive. In this case, uh, you don't need just H positive. You need that the whole second fundamental form is positive. Okay, then under these assumptions, um, we have uh, this, this matrix inequality. So I write with um, D the ordinary derivative in Rn. Uh, 
So this is inequality in the sense of matrices. Uh, in particular, taking trace, uh, if taking uh, j equal to y and summing, you obtain that Laplace of u plus uh, n u over 2t minus uh, gradient u square over u is greater than or equal to zero. And you, you see that it looks uh, quite similar to the, the one for the um, mean curvature. Uh, of course, uh, since we have this, this uh, is also equal to ut. You can uh, write it equivalent, equivalently put in the, the, the time derivative. And uh, the interesting fact is that uh, the, basically the only solution which uh, satisfies the equality is uh, the heat kernel, possibly center that, uh, so the heat kernel starting at t equals zero, centered in, at any point, not necessarily in the origin. Um, so this is um, a common feature of these differential Harnack inequalities that um, they say that a certain expression uh, with derivatives is non-negative and the expression becomes, uh, you have equality in the case of certain special solutions, typically fundamental solutions. And um, let me show you in the case of the heat equation where the computation is slightly shorter, uh, how to derive the, the classical statement of the Harnack inequality. So if, um, uh, so given uh, uh, x1, t1, x2, t2 with uh, T2 greater than T1 greater than zero. We want to estimate the difference between uh, uh, the values uh, here. So we have these two points, uh, x1, uh, x2, T1, T2. Uh, then we set gamma of T equal to the segment joining them in space time, uh, x, one plus uh, um, so t minus t one over t two minus t one. Um, yes, x two minus x one. Uh, then uh, I want to compute the derivative of u along gamma. So this is uh, the u dx e dot gamma, xi dot gamma i plus the u over dt. Okay, then we use the inequality. The u over dt, the, the, the second form of the inequality, And uh, this, uh, so again is, uh, well, we, we can do um, uh, in the, the first uh, term, we can uh, bound from above by this. Uh, the modulus of the gradient of u times mod the modulus of uh, gamma dot. And this can be bounded by the inequality there, is greater than or equal to uh, minus uh, n u over 2t plus uh, gradient u square over u. Okay, the, the point is that we have a good uh, positive term. So we, we have greater than or equal to, so positive term uh, makes the inequality interesting. And we want to estimate this by this. So we use um, 
times gamma dot is uh, less than or equal to one half uh, u square over u plus uh, u times. We use this inequality. Um, so, not in this way, in this way. Using a suitable uh, Schwarz, uh, you, you have this. Uh, so this means that these two terms are uh, greater than minus. Um, so the, the whole thing is greater than u times uh, gamma dot square over 4 plus n over 2t. But who is uh, uh, gamma dot square? So gamma dot uh, is um, this uh, is uh, x2 minus x1 over Okay, the, the speed is this one, uh, plus uh, n over 2t. Okay, so uh, we have an ODE inequality satisfied by u. So since we have a factor u here, we can put the factor on the left hand side and interpret this as the derivative of log u. Along gamma is, um, so let me write it in this way. Um, so log of u x2 t2 over u x1 t1 so is equal to the integral from t1 to t2 of d dt log u gamma t t in the in dt. Then uh, this is um, greater than or equal to the integral from t1 to t2 of uh, this uh, uh, parenthesis. And what's this integral? So the, this does not depend on t. So the, um, uh, you just get this thing times the length of the interval. So you lose one factor to here. You find this. Uh, expression which is uh, uh, very, um, very common in, uh, in uh, the, when studying the heat kernel. And here you have um, n2 times the integral of um, uh, yeah, the, the minus I have just uh, uh, added. No, the, um, the, the, the square here, the, the, the square uh, is, um, gets away from with the integration. And then n2, I have to integrate logarithm. Uh, then um, I just find uh, t2 over t1. And then the, the conclusion is uh, that you have a one-sided control of what the solution does at a later time. You have that uh, the solution at a later time is controlled from below, from the solution at a previous time times uh, a suitable factor, which is um, um, T2 over T1 to the minus n half times uh, e to the minus uh, 
Okay, I hope I've, um, I've uh, written it properly. So, um, for instance, if x1 and x2 uh, vary in a fixed domain, then this uh, has um, th th this quantity ranges in a given interval. So you so you can say that the infimum at time t2 over the domain is bounded from below by the um, supremum uh, at the previous time uh, times this uh, constant, which only depends on t1, t2, and the set where you are looking, the, the compact set where you're looking. So the, this is the, uh, the way one recovers uh, classical uh, parabolic Karnak inequalities from these uh, differential ones which, however, seem very sensitive to the form of the equation because uh, they are uh, somehow related to something, uh, to the fact that you have a fundamental solution where you have an equality. So if, uh, as soon as you add some uh, first order term or uh, other things that uh, uh, make the whole thing more uh, less symmetric, then the, the, this whole machinery breaks. But as, as, far, as long as you wish to study certain specific uh, problems like uh, heat equation or porous medium equation or mean curvature flow, then you have this uh, very useful, almost magical identities that appear. And um, so the, um, for instance, for the, the, the Ricci flow, the corresponding Harnack inequality has played a very important role in the, in the analysis uh, in the um, results by Hamilton and Perelman. And, uh, okay, then uh, the, the, the remaining part, uh, I will speak about my, um, the, the result I had with Huiskan, uh, 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 some years ago about um, mean curvature flow with surgeries. So Gerard has already speaking, uh, spoken about this uh, in, in his lecture in the, um, of his more recent result in the two-dimensional case. So let me see again something. Um, so the, um, the motivation is, um, um, so this is something that for someone with a PDE background as, uh, as I have, for instance, uh, seems uh, a bit uh, strange at the beginning because uh, it's not something you would expect uh, to, to consider. Um, the idea, um, but it is easy to understand if one thinks of the geometric motivation, topological motivation that there is often with these flows. That is, uh, you consider some uh, hypersurface in R n plus one, and uh, you consider not just any hypersurface, but with some uh, curvature. Uh, Uh, curvature uh, assumptions. And uh, we will see in a moment uh, specific examples where we have carried out this theory. And uh, then you want somehow to, to show that uh, a hypersurface satisfying these assumptions must be diffeomorphic to some possible model geometry. You want to say it is uh, either diffeomorphic to this object or to this other object, uh, so to have a finite list of possibilities. And uh, you want to do it uh, by mean curvature flow. So naively speaking, you want to run uh, the mean curvature flow and show that um, uh, mt, uh, as uh, t goes to the singular time, converges to uh, 
some list of possible model geometries, and so uh, I don't know, a sphere, a torus, or something like this. And of course, this is, um, it turns out that it is a bit uh, naive because um, uh, you have the case of uh, convex uh, hypersurfaces where you have something like this. If M0 is convex, uh, so some curvature assumption, positive principal curvature, then uh, this is true. So, uh, I mean, uh, after rescaling, of course. Uh, MT converges to a sphere, but of course from, uh, this is not uh, interesting from uh, the point of view of a classification of hypersurfaces because uh, saying that uh, uh, convex hypersurfaces diffeomorphic to a sphere does not tell you anything new. You don't need mean curvature flow for this. Uh, so you want to study some more general, uh, no, not just convex, you want to uh, at least relax a bit convexity in order not to have an obvious uh, uh, structure. Uh, then you realize that you have a problem, that you have these uh, neck pinch singularities where you know that um, you are going to become singular in finite time, but only in a certain part of the hypersurface, and you have no information on what's happening next. So um, in this case, you have reached a singular time, but you are not able to tell how the hypersurface looks like. So in this case, uh, you wish to continue the flow. You would say, well, if uh, this neck is shrinking, then we assume that it's reasonable to imagine a flow where the um, hypersurface splits in two. We have two pieces, which uh, maybe starts with this uh, corner, and then uh, they continue independently their evolution. Uh, the, the corner becomes instantaneously smooth by the smoothing property of parabolic problems. And then we continue th these uh, separate pieces. Uh, and if we have other neck pinch singularities, we do the same way. This, uh, so at this stage, this is very naive. And it can be, from a rigorous point of view, one can uh, do two things. Uh, one can uh, give a definition of weak solutions. to continue uh, the flow after singularities. And uh, this has been done by many autos. This is very common in, um, in the study of PDE. There are many PDEs where you only have local uh, existence of smooth solution, and after some time, you have to consider some weak formulation. So Bracchi solutions that you have seen in the course of uh, Yoshihiro um, are uh, the first notion of weak solution that was given. Another successful weak, solu weak notion is, uh, are the solution in the viscosity sense based on the level set approach, which I guess will uh, appear next week in the courses of um, um, Professor Zotto and Suganidis. Uh, and, um, but there are really many possibilities of defining weak solutions. And let me mention, uh, uh, yeah, he's here, <laughs> an approach, uh, um, very interesting approach, uh, uh, which was carried out, among others, by uh, Giovanni Bellettini, uh, building on um, suggestions of the Giorgi, the so-called the barrier uh, uh, notion so based on comparison with the smooth flows uh, and many others. These are uh, very important notions uh, that have uh, in some cases, issues with existence, uniqueness. Uh, it's a great problem to analyze uh, regularity. Uh, but for um, the purposes uh, of geometric applications, uh, so at least until now, they have not 
been uh, um, very suited to this purpose because you can define a mathematical object which is a satisfactory solution of the problem uh, the PDE sense, but you do not know well what, is, what the solution is really doing uh, after it becomes singular. So you cannot say at the end it will uh, converge to a finite collection of uh, uh, pieces uh, of uh, topology which can be either this or this or this. Uh, therefore, in the context uh, of uh, Ricci flow, Hamilton suggested, uh, and uh, then uh, um, he first made it in uh, some cases, and then Perelman did it in the, in the important general case of three-dimensional three Ricci flow, um, the flow with surgeries, which was uh, suggested by Hamilton and uh, done by Perelman, um, that is, um, is based on this idea. You stop the smooth flow shortly before the singular time, then uh, uh, remove uh, the singular parts Singular meaning with a large curvature of uh, MT and um, replace them uh, smoothly with uh, uh, more regular ones. and then continue the flow. Continue the flow, uh, so up to the next singularities. Uh, until um, all uh, remaining uh, uh, manifolds, uh, uh, or remaining hypersurfaces, uh, this procedure could possibly disconnect. So after the first surgery, you could have more than one hypersurface. So all remaining hypersurfaces are uh, diffeomorphic to uh, the, the, the desired uh, model geometries. And um, so in the, the case of the neck pinch, what you would do, you would um, cut a part of uh, this neck. So you would um, wait until a short time before the, the neck shrinks, and then you um, remove the, 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 the central part of the neck. You remain with the two holes, and you fill smoothly the, the holes. And um, so if things are really like this, uh, then uh, um, it means that um, so before uh, you have some uh, manifold uh, M, after you have uh, M prime, M two prime, um, I mean, uh, can also be that it connects uh, somewhere else, but let's uh, consider a case where it disconnects. And, uh, but you, you know what you have done. You have um, 
taken away a region diffeomorphic to a cylinder, and you have replaced the two holes by two disks. So the, from a topological point of view, you can say that the, the surface before surgery is obtained by the other two by a procedure which is called uh, direct sum in uh, uh, connected sum, sorry, connected sum in uh, uh, algebraic topology. Uh, so you connect the sum, you simply remove two disks uh, from the, the two manifolds and replace them with a collar joining them. Um, so you, since your uh, aim is to describe the geometry of this, uh, then uh, um, this is uh, good for you because uh, you say that this is the connected sum of uh, these two, then uh, again, these two can be in turn connected sum of other things if you do other surgeries. And if the procedure stops in, uh, if the procedure stops in a finite number of steps and you end up with a finite number of uh, known uh, objects, you have classified the initial uh, manifold. And this is what um, uh, Perelman uh, has done for the Ricci flow. Um, Perelman, uh, so following the program of Hamilton, he um, uh, proved uh, not only the Poincare conjecture, but the so-called the Thurston geometrization conjecture, which says, uh, very roughly speaking, that every abstract uh, three-dimensional Riemannian manifold uh, compact uh, can be decomposed in the union of pieces uh, which can be of uh, eight possible types that were classified by Thurston, the so-called uh, model three-dimensional geometries by Thurston. And uh, basically he used the uh, Ricci flow, so he took uh, an arbitrary metric on a three-dimensional uh, abstract Riemannian manifold, he uh, let the Ricci flow run. He did the surgery procedure. Um, that case, um, um, it is possible that some uh, pieces uh, exist for infinite time. It's not like a compact mean curvature flow. But he proved that um, uh, after I'm cheating a bit. After finitely many surgeries, you are left with uh, uh, either pieces uh, which uh, collapse, which shrink, uh, intuitively speaking, shrinking to a point, although it's, uh, it's not an immersed uh, manifold, and uh, behave like, uh, like spheres, or objects which uh, have a long time existence, and then it is known that these objects uh, fall into the class uh, described by Thurston. And um, so the, this implies uh, the geometrization conjecture, in particular if uh, the initial uh, manifold is simply connected, then uh, only the first possibility occurs that it has to be um, uh, connected sum of uh, spheres uh, and tori, but uh, uh, the only simply connected uh, connected sum of uh, this object is the sphere itself. So he proved the Poincaré conjecture. And um, so what I will um, talk about now instead is um, uh, so less uh, ambitious project that uh, um, me and uh, Huiskan did for the mean curvature flow. Um, where um, we did a very similar studies, although with, uh, uh, with no Poincaré conjecture at the end, some, uh, some more restricted uh, topological result. And uh, so what we did uh, was in a general dimension, except for the lowest one, so it is for dimension from three above, but uh, in contrast with uh, Perelman's result, we cannot classify any hypersurface. We need a, a certain, uh, um, so somehow restrictive curvature assumption, which, however, is enough to ensure uh, some uh, uh, rich uh, behavior. Um, so there is a key point in all this uh, that uh, the, I am speaking loosely of a neck 
So neck, I mean something which uh, after rescaling look like a cylinder. Uh, well, cylinder can have uh, certain dimension in the spherical factor and certain dimensions in the flat factor. Uh, we want um, um, the neck to be like uh, as n minus 1 times uh, some uh, r, of course, I mean r at the limit, uh, so we only have a finite interval. So we want something which looks like, uh, which has, uh, um, so n minus 2 curve direction and the 1 uh, in the other direction. Uh, because um, uh, this is um, as in the um, hamilton perelman situation for the Ricci flow, we, you have one flat direction and n minus 1 curved once. Because um, this, is, uh, uh, this case is uh, more reasonable to handle because in um, one direction you can say the neck starts here and stops here. In one direction you have an interval in one dimension. Um, connected open set in one dimension is an interval. Uh, in, um, if we had something like uh, two flat directions uh, and Sn minus 2, then we would have a region of uh, Sn minus 2 bubbles, uh, uh, then uh, a region in two, uh, with two dimension is more difficult to handle. And until now, no one has, uh, I think, not even tried to do surgeries uh, on an object like this, because it's uh, more difficult to say where it starts, where it stops, how to cut it, how to fill the holes. I think eventually it will also be done in a higher dimension. But until now, this is the only situation that has been treated. So um, we, first of all, uh, um, our description of the singularities is confined to the positive mean curvature case. So we will assume this to begin with. But uh, then we want to exclude um, the other uh, uh, cylinders as limits. So we assume this property, assume uh, uh, M0, uh, a property which is called uh, two convexity. Uh, this means the sum of uh, the two smallest curvatures is positive. It is uh, easy to prove that it is invariant uh, under the flow. So if you start with this property, you remain with this property. And the proof is um, uh, analog to the proof of the convexity. That is, uh, you can... Um, find the maximum principal argument. This is um, inequality of the, of the smallest two uh, eigenvector, um, eigenvalues of a, of a matrix. And um, you can reduce it to a maximum principle for functions by saying, uh, suppose this fails at the first time, consider the two eigenvectors corresponding to this and uh, consider the um, second fundamental form. So co continue this, uh, define these uh, vectors as a vector field everywhere, and con consider the function obtained uh, by evaluating second fundamental form uh, um, the, um, on this, uh, the sum of the second fundamental quadratic form on the first vector and on the second vector. And you, you see that you contradict the maximum principle. So you see that this is preserved. Uh, or there is um, another version of uh, Hamilton's maximum principle that uh, for tensors, which implies this uh, more easily, but uh, I haven't uh, mentioned it to you, so I'm not using this one. And um, in fact, you can also see that um, some sort of pinching uh, is um, invariant under the flow that you have something like this. 
And if you have something like this, you see that you cannot have more than one flat uh, factor in the limit. Because if you have Sn minus 2 times R2 or more, then you have in the limit two zero directions. So the limit would not satisfy this uh, inequality, but this inequality is a scale invariant. So a uh, two convex uh, uh, hypersurface can only have uh, a blow up limits which also satisfy this inequality. So this means uh, that uh, the only profiles for two convex are um, possible profiles uh, are the, the sphere or uh, the cylinder with only one flat direction or uh, uh, you have the type 2 singularities. Well, the type 2 singularities, you see that the only two convex one is the, is the bowl, uh, what we call the bowl. Translating soliton. Because um, on the bowl, um, um, this um, is asymptotic to a paraboloid. So you have uh, one curvature which decays um, more fast than the other ones. So um, lambda one. Uh, alone does not satisfy this, but lambda 2, with lambda 2, yes. If you, if you make uh, the n minus 1 dimensional bowl uh, times uh, a flat direction, which would be the other possibilities of type 2 singularity, you would not have this. So this means that you only have these three possibilities. Okay, then uh, this means that if you have a singularity with this profile, then it means that your hypersurface uh, or uh, the portion you're looking at uh, is um, diffeomorphic to a sphere, and then this is fine. This means that in this decomposition, uh, so either all is the sphere, if it is the first singularity, or if it is a subsequent singularity, it means that one of the factors that you are considering is a sphere. And uh, this is also very easy because uh, from a topological point of view, connected sum with a sphere is, uh, leaves the topology unchanged. Uh, this would be the case uh, I described you before of the neck pinch in which you typically disconnect the, the, um, your hypersurface and do the inverse operation of a connected sum. Uh, but then there is this case here. What do you do in this case here? Um, I, will, um, I will tell you in a moment. Uh, but first, let me also show you that the naive um, uh, thing I said you before uh, is not so easy as I told you. So let us, uh, again, stick to this case. So um, the thing is, um, you want that, um, uh, so by doing this surgery, um, the, the, the flow uh, has, uh, so you want to make his existence time larger. So you want to say that the flow is going to become singular. I do this surgery so it will still exist for some, some larger time. Mm. So from a topological point of view, you imagine that if you just uh, uh, do like this, uh, um, then these two parts will uh, get away and uh, the singularity will be avoided. But this is uh, very difficult to, to prove. So to show that you have, um, that you are really, um, uh, avoiding this uh, singularity which is about to occur, occur 
you argue in another way you want to do the surgery in order to take away the part with large curvature. You want that after surgery, the maximum of the curvature has decreased. And in this picture, the maximum of the curvature has not decreased. If you, if you take away a cylinder with a certain radius and you then add some spherical caps with the same radius, maybe you even increase the maximum of the curvature. So this is not good enough. But the, this was all um, somehow already in the mind of uh, Hamilton uh, from the very beginning. He understood, well, um, then we, we do the surgery, but not in this picture. So this, uh, we know that asymptotically it is a cylinder, so it is flat. But uh, this is only in the limit. Um, for smaller times, uh, it uh, becomes larger and larger. So if we go enough far away, we reach regions with uh, smaller curvature. And then we do not do surgery like this. We do surgery like this. So we have uh, cut away this part uh, with, um, with the largest curvature. And uh, we are left with uh, some part with uh, lower curvature. Also, the, the spherical caps that we have added have lower curvature. And um, something similar um, happens here. So here you know that you have something like uh, on the, the usual scale you see this and when you rescale you, you see this uh, translating object when you magnify around here. Then uh, the first sight seems this does not fit in our picture, there is no neck here to be cut, but again, this was uh, clearly in the uh, mind of uh, Hamilton when he designed this, um, this procedure. It's enough that you follow this bowl uh, long enough, uh, and then you do the, the surgery like this. You cut this part, uh, and you leave uh, something with lower curvature. So in this case, uh, the surgery is uh, topologically trivial. You are not, you are substituting your hypersurface with something which is diffeomorphic, but in this case also you have um, decreased uh, the curvature. So the, the aim uh, is um, to uh, find, uh, so fix uh, uh, two big values uh, of the curvature uh, such that uh, uh, whenever uh, the maximum of h at time t is equal to h2, you do surgery. But after the surgery, uh, H max uh, is less than or equal to H1. So this also shows that surgeries are discrete in time because to go from two given values, uh, the hypersurface needs a fixed amount of time. By the way, this is a bit different from uh, what Perelman does in his Richie Flow papers. Perelman does the surgery exactly at the singular time. He has a singular limit object uh, and he cuts away the, um, the parts which are either singular or with very large curvature. But uh, uh, 
it's not so different um, in the end. This was a Hamilton original uh, construction which uh, we also follow for the mean curvature flow. Um, then, so I'm, I have not much time left, so I just say some intuitive uh, ideas. Uh, um, the fact that you have to work uh, not necessarily where the curvature is maximal, but also below, and it's not completely easy to tell how much you, how much smaller than H2, you have to choose H1. Also because when we did this result, uh, this part was not so clear. We just knew that we would have a translating soliton, but uh, there was not yet re this result that the unique one is the, this rotational symmetric one. Um, then this means that you have, um, some, somehow the um, description of the blow-ups which I gave you this morning is not enough. To, uh, to do this construction. Um, so first of all, um, I must admit what I written on the board was a bit um, um, slightly cheating. So when I say classification of blow-ups um, of uh, mean curvature flow with uh, positive mean curvature, um, as uh, Huiskan told you, um, the limit of the blow-ups, uh, so the, um, the rescaling, uh, the rescaling is done uh, uh, following a certain criterion, ex uh, especially in, uh, for type two singularities. You don't choose uh, any sequence uh, of points where the curvature is going to infinity. You choose uh, suitable sequences. Uh, so you may find uh, different limits uh, in uh, by choosing other sequences. So there is no uniqueness. Uh, and uh, for instance, for type two, uh, you, if you choose differently the, uh, the sequence, you can find limits uh, uh, which are s closer to the type one limits. That is, um, this gives you some information about the regions with maximal curvature. But here you also have to work with regions where the curvature is very large. You can make uh, this H1 as large as you wish, but in turn, uh, H1 may be far from the maximum of the curvature. So you need uh, uh, to analyze, uh, to de describe the, the profile in um, around uh, any uh, point PT with um, HPT large enough, let's say HPT greater than this um, H1 where we which uh, take as a um, threshold. Um, so no, not necessarily close to H max. Uh, so something like that has um, the context of Ricci flow is called uh, canonical neighborhood theorem. Um, this is, um, we, we didn't use this uh, terminology in our paper, but somehow we show in our paper that um, um, So it is possible um, I make the statement very, very informal. One should uh, define exactly 
the meaning of the things and um, put constants, but I give you an intuitive uh, picture. Um, so that there exists um, um, H1 large enough, depending basically on the initial value, uh, such that if um, H P T is greater than um, H1, uh, three possibility occur. Um, so the, um, either the whole uh, hypersurface is convex. And in this case, uh, uh, you, we don't do anything. I mean, if the whole hypersurface is convex, then uh, um, we, we stop here. Uh, or we say we will continue until it shrinks to a point, and you know that it's diffeomorphic to a sphere. Or the other possibility is, um, um, so if um, lambda 1 over h is uh, uh, small, then uh, um, um, fpt is uh, at the center of uh, a neck. One should give a precise definition of neck, but neck uh, we'll just say that uh, a neck is a portion of, uh, of uh, my hypersurface, which uh, after rescaling uh, is uh, close uh, in a suitable CK topology uh, by a suitable small constant to uh, a round cylinder. And uh, the, um, the third possibility is uh, maybe I should have said this first because uh, the third is somehow um, so if lambda 1 over h uh, is uh, not small um, let me remind you, we have the convexity estimates. So when the curvature is large, we know that lambda 1 over h uh, um, cannot be big negative. It can be either around 0 or big positive. So small can be either small negative, small positive, but the other case is only, this means uh, not small, it means uh, is uh, big and positive. Uh, so then either we have uh, one, so it is, uh, uh, it is positive everywhere, so you have a convex uh, hypersurface. Then um, uh, FPT belongs uh, to um, a region, uh, so to a convex region. Um, with um, so, uh, surrounded by a neck that is um, somehow what we do in this case. We have this point with uh, uh, where the curvature where we have a certain convexity. Then we have two cases, either the it remains so, so we find something convex. Or at a certain point, we find something with a small lambda 1, so we fall in the case 2. And then this means that here we have a neck. So this means that the original point is in a, in a convex region, uh, and uh, where this convex region ends, uh, lambda 1 uh, becomes small, uh, and we fall in this uh, 
in this part. So I should have stated maybe in this way. Um, if lambda 1 is small, uh, you have this. Uh, if lambda 1 is large, you have either 1 or the 3. In this way, the, um, so the logical thinking is more clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a neighborhood uh, uh, which, uh, which has lambda 1 positive everywhere, but um, the, um, the neighborhood uh, has a boundary where, uh, which coincides with the boundary of a neck. Um, so this shows that except for this case where we don't need to do any surgery, in the other cases uh, we find uh, a neck either around our point uh, or um, very close to our point. And then there is the other important result uh, that you can... Um, that it ensures you that um, you can really um, do the surgery in such a way that um, uh, the curvature is decreased. So those kind of results we call the, the neck detection theorem that we find the neck. But if we find a region like this where the curvature is almost constant, we are not yet happy because we cannot cut away just this region. The curvature would become large. There is another result which we call the, the neck continuation. Any neck can be continued. This means um, we have something uh, which locally looks like a cylinder, but um, actually the, the, the radius uh, increases uh, more and more. Um, until, uh, uh, so, th so on either end, uh, um, uh, it opens uh, up so that the curvature becomes uh, large or um, um, it closes with a convex region. And the third possibility is that um, actually you are following a long thin torus. So, so you, you follow the neck until you, uh, the two ends meet. Or uh, it, um, so the, the, the two ends meet. So, uh, so in the first case, if it opens up in both directions, you cut away a central part large enough in order to take away all the part with the large curvature. If um, it closes in both uh, directions, it means that the whole thing is diffeomorphic to a sphere, then you just uh, throw it away. You know that that part uh, is diffeomorphic to a sphere. If um, it closes on one side and it opens on the other side, you do surgery only here. It's like the degenerate neck pinch. And if the two ends meet, again, you know what this is topologically. It is uh, Sn minus 1 times S1 uh, topologically. Then since you know the, to the topology, you can throw it away. and. Um, the final result um, so is that you can uh, define this uh, uh, mean curvature flow with surgeries from any two convex hypersurface. 
and um, that um, the, um, the procedure uh, finishes after a finite number of steps. So after a finite number of surgery, you are only left with uh, pieces of a kind that you can throw away. So either spheres uh, topologically or either SN minus one times uh, cross S1. And so the topological conclusion is the following. Given any M in Rn plus one uh, smooth uh, closed uh, hypersurface uh, uh, to convex. Uh, in particular, uh, mean convex. Uh, uh, then uh, M is diffeomorphic to a finite connected sum of uh, spheres and uh, tori. Since the connected sum with the sphere is, um, uh, does not change the topology, this means that either you only have a sphere or you have a finite number of factors uh, like uh, Sn minus one uh, times uh, S one. Um, so this result, uh, also for more general for K convex, uh, was uh, already known from a topological point of view using uh, basically. Uh, Morse function analysis under the distance function from the boundary. But um, from um, the point of view of diffeomorphic equivalence, it, it, was, uh, it was new. So it, I mean, it's not, of course, as striking as the applications of the Ricci flow, but uh, uh, it was uh, a new uh, topological application. As I, um, I'm sorry, I forgot here the um, we had this restriction because we needed uh, a gradient estimate, which we, uh, we found um, a nice proof by maximum principle of a gradient estimate, which only worked um, for n greater than two. So we had this restriction. And let me recall you that, uh, well, I just say you in words, uh, that for, um, n equal to uh, a similar result uh, with uh, mean convex instead of two, con which would be two convex for uh, uh, in R2, um, has been proved by Brendel and Huisken. And uh, at the same time, Hasselhofer and Kleiner also uh, did an alternative proof uh, of uh, all cases from uh, two above. And uh, that in the context of um, Riemannian ambient space, uh, um, two convexity is not preserved uh, by mean curvature flow, but Brendle and Huisken have uh, done a very nice paper where they, so in the case n equal two, there is a result um, uh, Huisken has told you about. So mean curvature flow of uh, two-dimensional surfaces in R3 can also be done by the surgery procedure in, an, in a Riemannian ambient space. This is what uh, Huisken uh, described in his last lecture. In a higher dimension, two convexity is not invariant under a mean curvature flow in a general ambient manifold, but Brendel and Huisken have um, um, found out uh, a different flow with a uh, speed uh, just designed to preserve uh, two convexity and with uh, similar properties to uh, mean curvature flow. Uh, although the speed is nonlinear, they were able to perform a similar program to this, uh, I think with some uh, sign assumption on the sectional curvature on the target manifold. So for a large class of target manifold, they were uh, able to perform a similar analysis by a different flow with a nonlinear speed. So, okay, I 
guess uh, this is enough. I thank you for your attention, and uh, uh, so I apologize that in many steps I, I did not do the details or uh, did not do a precise argument, but if you wish to have uh, references for anything I talked about, you can ask me or write me, and I can give you more information. So I thank you for your attention throughout this week.